Uh, well, good morning all. Uh, thank you for coming. I know it's very early. Uh, I, I usually don't even get, early, uh, get up uh, as early as today, but uh, thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. Uh, you might have an exhausting week, so it is really, you, you really deserve a clap for, for coming to this festival very early in the morning. Or um, I come from Mexico, so in Mexico it's 7 a.m., so it's very early. Most people are hungover from the party last night. I, I didn't go to the party because I'm, I was giving this talk. Uh, first of all, can you, do me, can you do me a favor? Just like, please, everybody come to the front, the front rows. I mean, we have enough room. I'm not even using the microphone. I don't know if that's okay. No, no microphone, perfecto. For the streaming. I don't like using microphone because I, I really tend to move my hands a lot, so it's hard to do it when you have a microphone in your hand. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, welcome to this talk. This talk is called Introducing New Generations to Open Source. Uh, my name is Justin Bear. Oh, it doesn't, doesn't look at all. Uh, my name is uh, Fernando Perales. I come from Mexico, and I know it is kind of weird even though I come from Mexico, I'm talking in English. Uh, it was uh, a suggestion from my Brazilian staff advisor that he really encouraged me to give this talk in English. But if you have questions in Spanish, or también hablo español, obviamente, de manera nativa, pueden acercarse al terminar la plática. Well, about me. Uh, my name is Fernando Perales. Uh, it's pretty long. I, I actually have a first name at the beginning and a last name at the at the end. So for sure, let's keep it fair. Um, I consider myself a fourth advocate. Uh, I really like giving talks, workshops about free, libre, and open source software uh, in Mexico. I, I have given lots of, and it's my first talk outside uh, Mexico, which is um, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, I'm passionate about web development. Uh, I, uh, at the beginning, I. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll use this. Um, Passionate about web development. This is what I do for, for a living, and I've been doing uh, pretty much Ruby and Rails for the last four years. Also, public speaker information. Uh, this year has been great for me because I have given about five talks, and I think I'm giving two more for the at the end of the year, and, I, and I'm, I'm very glad. Um, also, electric-based student. Uh, I really drop the uh, music career, but I really like to say this uh, as a way of remember myself that I really need to learn electric bass because I really like. Um, also, some of my other things I like, heavy metal, uh, beer, of course, uh, Twitter. I really spend a lot of time on that social network. That's why my username is at the bottom and the hashtag, so I really encourage you to use both. Um, Ruby, Ruby the language, and Gregory Salust. Uh, I really like to mention this because uh, there's a quote uh, before there was James Bond, there was Gregory Salust. Uh, um, who is this guy? Uh, there's a, uh, there, there are 12, 13 books about Gregory Salust. He was a spy in the uh, World War II, I think. Uh, these, war, uh, these books were written between 1938 and 1958. So I think they are pretty cool books, kind of underrated. That's why I like to mention these books. If you like kind of James Bond and Spies, you might find these books interesting. Um, and I come from Guadalajara, Mexico. I'm not really sure if I'm the speaker who have traveled the most to get here, but I'm sure I'm among the, the ones. Um, this is Mexico. Who has been to Mexico before? One. Okay, cool. Um, this is Mexico, and the, uh, there are two points. The blue one, which is Guadalajara, and the, the one in black, Mexico City. This is the largest city in Mexico. And then um, we have a state. So that state with a cross shape, it's called Jalisco. This is where I come from. And Jalisco is divided into 
municipalities, the same as, as Portugal, and, and Brazil, I mean. And that little red one is Guadalajara. Even though it is small, it's the second largest city in Mexico. And you can find some pictures on your favorite uh, searcher. Uh, it's a really nice city. Uh, in, on an ideal world, I should have traveled only 15 hours and 55 minutes, so almost six, 16 hours. But there's no direct flight from Guadalajara to Portugal, so I have to do this. First, uh, one hour, one hour uh, from Guadalajara to Mexico City, and then wait. Uh, I think it was four hours at the airport. Um, then from Mexico City to Lima, Peru, uh, I think it was five or six hours. So I was very exhausted at that time, and then wait a couple of hours more. Uh, this was a uh, Tuesday night, so I was at Peru at, should have been 12 uh, a.m. Wednesday, and then wait more, and then uh, from Lima to Porto Alegre. So I arrived here on Wednesday at 5 a.m., and I couldn't make it to the early conference on Wednesday, which were uh, started at started at 9 a.m., which is very hard for me. So, well, I'm here to uh, Forum International of, of, of Free Software. Uh, and well, uh, this is a fun fact that I, I, I found while doing this uh, presentation. At Guadalajara, Mexico, and Porto Alegre in Brazil are sister cities. Uh, I'm not really sure what it means, but I mean, I found this on Wikipedia, so it was a, a fun fact. This is the, the second uh, second uh, in the list, Guadalajara, Mexico. So I think we are somehow brothers and sisters. So high five, everybody. Well, uh, what, I, what I do for a living, I'm a software engineer at a company called Magma Labs. Uh, we are an e-commerce consultancy based, on, based in Mexico. Uh, we have been on the business for seven years. Um, quite high end, by the way. I can give you more info once the talk is done. Uh, we pretty much work for startups in the United, United States. Uh, our biggest client at, at today is Mo uh, GoPro. I think you have heard of them, the cameras for action. And, and I also represent and I run the Ruby Guadalajara community. GDL is short for Guadalajara because we like big names, but we don't like to pronounce them. Uh, and I'm really impressed that I haven't found any people who program Ruby in Brazil. Uh, I mean, this is not a bad thing, but I, uh, I was expecting to, to interact with uh, Ruby communities. Maybe I haven't found them. So uh, we, our meetups are every, every thir Thursday monthly. So the next one is the next week. And that's, that's, that's the web page in case you want to take a look. Uh, we usually record the talks, so if you want to practice your both Ruby and Spanish language skills, you can go there. Also, I represent RailsBridge Mexican chapter. Uh, we started this uh, last year, I think. Um, what is RailsBridge? Has anyone heard of uh, RailsBridge? Pro tip, it, it Rails related, Ruby, Ruby and Rails related. Uh, RailsBridge is a nonprofit association founded in San Francisco uh, in, I think, it was 2009. For, uh, and the purpose of this organization is to give free workshops about uh, mainly Ruby and Rails, but also uh, for other web uh, development technologies, uh, such as JavaScript, HTML, HTML CSS, etc. Um, and we are running the Mexican chapter uh, along uh, Ana Castro who was also a member of the board of RailsBridge, and Nora, uh, an, another friend from Colima called Nora. I'm, I'm going to talk about them uh, a little bit more in, in, in this talk. And that's the page where uh, what we have done mainly is translate all the material, which is uh, free to redist redistribute, and translate into Spanish, and make the Spanish uh, workshops available for anyone. Um, well, that's me. Um, and before we get started, I want to make uh, an announcement, a disclaimer. Um, this is not a talk about programming, even though I have talked a lot of, uh, about Ruby and Ruby Rails, but this is not about programming. Uh, I'm not talking about code, I'm not talking about testing, I'm not talking about servers. Uh, but this talk is about uh, people who program. Uh, by the way, uh, please raise your hand 
uh, or, or if you are a programmer, software engineer, um, uh, I don't know. If you work directly with code, please raise your hand. Like write code. Okay. If you are designer, uh, UI, UX uh, experience, uh, creator. If you were more on the creative part uh, of on, on the design part, please raise your hand. No one. Um, okay. Even though, as I mentioned, this is, this is a talk about people who program, but if you are not a programmer, this talk all, is also for you. I have a, a, a part for you. So, okay, let's start. Uh, the name of the talk, Introducing New Generations to Open Source, uh, which is kind of wrong. Actually, this is not the talk I wanted to give. But then I thought, well, maybe introducing new generations to free software. But again, no, we, I, I don't really want to talk about this. So I, I, I think the best uh, title for this talk is this, Introducing, introducing New Generations to Free Libre and Open Source Software. Uh, but at, at the first time, I, I was not really used to the, to the term floss. So what's the first thing you do when you don't know a word? Like right now. If, if, I, give, if I say a word you, you, you haven't heard ever of, what do you do? Google, OK. In my case, I went for. Wikipedia, so what's FLOSS? And what I found that's pretty interesting, uh, I found this, FLOSS is a core of thing filaments used to remove food and then turn plaque from between teeth in areas that toothbrush is unable to reach. And yeah, this is a FLOSS, but it's not the kind of FLOSS I wanted. No, this is a dental FLOSS. So I'm not a dental FLOSS uh, promoter or advocate. I mean, use it, it's, it's good for your health. But no, I mean, the, the FLOSS I'm talking about is free libre and open source software. I mean, uh, for this talk, I mean, I'm going to use the terms without any distinction. So when I mention uh, open source, I also refer to free, free or libre software and the other way around, just for this talk. Uh, who, who read the abstract of this talk? Who knows what this talk is going to be about? Just raise your hand. Okay, one, two, okay. So this talk was uh, created with uh, three questions into my, into my mind. The first question, how to make young developers contribute to open source? I mean, uh, this is a free uh, software festival, so I really expect that most of the people are used to at least the term. And most of the people who come here are free software users. I mean, they, at some point, they decided to drop Windows and start using Linux. Maybe then they drop uh, Chrome or Internet Explorer and they started to use uh, Firefox or, Cr or Chromium. Then they might decide to drop uh, Microsoft Office and they start using LibreOffice. Uh, for designers, maybe some designers decide to drop uh, Photoshop and Cordell and they started to use GIMP, Inkscape. Um, I don't know. I mean, uh, we have plenty of users of free software here. I'm really sure of uh, I'm, I'm sure of that, but we really need more than that. I mean, we have developers, we have a uh, computer science students who, uh, from this university and many others, and we really want them not only to use free software but also to make free software and contribute to projects that they use every day. So how do we make this? I, I mean, it is good that they use free software, but it is better that if they create free software and collaborate free software. The second question I, I, I want, uh, I'm going to answer with this talk is, how to find talent for your company? I mean, we are a seven-year-old company, but we have a lot of problems to f uh, finding people who do Ruby on Ruby Rails in Mexico. And of course, every country has their own problems. Maybe uh, they can't find web developers, they can't find uh, embedded system developers, they can find uh, C developers, name it. What, uh, as, as you wish, but how do you find talent for your company? And, and the other problem related to this is, you, you, it is hard to find talent for a small company, uh, and this happens because the, the big companies, uh, most of the students want to work with the big ones. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna say names, but, you, but you, you, I think you, figure, you can figure it out easily. So how do you find talent for your company? And the third question, how to help underrepresented groups to start a professional path on programming. I mean, uh, when, when uh, I, I, 
I, I really want to mention that I didn't use the word only women, because I mean, they are not the only underrepresented group. In Mexico, uh, the official language is Spanish, but we have around, I think, 68 native languages, which are also, um, which are also used for for some uh, in some groups and in some places and we have around 270 variations of those languages so we can say that mexico has one big official language and 270 unofficial languages so those people are 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 also an underrepresented group how do we make for example people from other countries who live in mexico to country, uh, to start a professional pound career how do we help people from public universities or people who, who doesn't have a formal education on programming or computer science to start a professional path on programming? That's why I use the term underrepresented groups. Uh, I, I'm sure in Brazil there are some uh, different groups underrepresented in the, in the IT industry that I, uh, I didn't mention. But again, it's up to you to figure out which groups are underrepresented in, in, in your country. So this is what we do what we did. Um, let's go back in time to the wonderful to, to, uh, 2015. What was going on at that year? In case you somehow were sleeping on a cave that year, well, we have the left, left shark uh, on the Super Bowl, which was very catchy on internet. We also have this, I don't know, the, the, the blue uh, with black and golden with black uh, dress problem. Uh, we have Bruno Mars hitting with uh, Uptown Funky, and you heard that song everywhere you went. Even though if you, were, if you went to a rock bar or a rock music concert, somehow the song was there. Um, my favorite, the John Cena uh, coming back to WWE. So this is pretty much what happened on the internet on, uh, the last year. At that time, I, live, uh, I used to live uh, in Colima, Mexico. Uh, I mean, it's... Colima is uh, around three hours by car from Guadalajara, uh, and it's a small town. The, the capital of Colima is a city called Colima as well. And I think Colima became famous last year uh, thanks to this photograph. Um, Cesar Cantu took this uh, photograph of the Colima Volcano, which is one of the most active volcanoes in the world. And I mean, it's a stunning picture. I used to work around, uh, like, I don't know, it should be 100 kilometers from, from the volcano. And at that time, uh, a group of women in Colima, they uh, decided to start uh, a group called Codificadas. Uh, what was the purpose? The same purpose I've mentioned. Like to, to, in this case, to help women in Colima and students in Colima to uh, start working uh, for companies in the city, which are not really a lot, um, and also help them to discover some uh, languages that are not usually thought at the university. And this, then this group later later on became something that you might have heard: women who code, Colima. I know that because I, I found out that there are some uh, women who code chapters in Brazil, not in Porto Alegre but in other cities, which is cool. Uh, and then uh, in 2013, uh, we organized the first Rails Bridge uh, workshop in Mexico ever, and I think in Latin America ever. And it was in Colima. It was not in the big cities. It was in a small one. Uh, at that time, uh, Desi McAdam, which is uh, a very well-known person in the Ruby community, uh, she fly to she 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 went to Colima, gave the workshop, and most important. She, she taught us how to teach this workshop. So we are allowed to both to reproduce the workshop and to help other people and to teach other people how to give this workshop. Um, at the time, Ana Castro Animoro on Twitter, uh, she, she found out that there, were, there was uh, a program, an international program called Rails Girls Summer of Code. What is this about? Uh, it's a kind of internship for people in this case, especially for, 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 for women. Uh, they are, in, uh, there's a three month, I think, three month internship, and they invite uh, pro open source projects from, from all the world. 
they submit their application. Hey, I want to participate on, on, on the Summer of Code program. Okay. Uh, they review the application. They talk to the, the owners of the, of the project or the leaders of the project and then decide to set uh, several projects. On the other hand, uh, students apply to this program. They, they, uh, and they are, and, and the best thing of all is, is they are paid. I, I'm not really, I don't really remember how much they are paid, but for, for those three months, they are given uh, uh, money so they can uh, work full time on their projects. Um, Anna discovered this and, and, and told us, uh, hey, we should really try to participate. I mean, we have. Uh, a couple of talented girls. Uh, she, she discovered those girls that, you know, when, when you have a community, there, there's always people who, who, who tries to do more, and who, um, which is more participative, which is more curious. And in any group you, you go, you will find these kind of people. Um, in this case, Sandra and Karen were those people. They were always asking, they, they were always trying to make a better work. So Anna mentioned, like, um, we should apply and we should tell these girls to, to apply as well. So we can be their mentors. Um, they can apply, they can, they can get the, the, the money, and they can uh, spend uh, three months working on full time on open source. Well, great, let's do it. We applied, but we were not selected. Um, but we had. Um, uh, another option, or last option, was to uh, we could participate on on Summer of Code as a volunteer team. What it means? A volunteer team it is uh, doesn't get any money from uh, from the association, but can work on the project if the owner of the project accepts them. So we found this project, uh, RubyGameDev.com, and we talked to Andrew, the the owner of the project, and and he accepted to work with us. He already has, uh, I think, uh, a group from Europe. I don't remember which country, but he he decided to work with both the the, the group from Europe and the group from Mexico. So man, that was very cool. And then um, Nora Aromaron at Twitter, uh, she joins to give us some support. I mean, we were, we have it was the first time uh, Anna and myself were mentors of anyone. So we decided we need some help with the mentorship. Uh, so what is rubygamedev.com? Have you used or heard of Stack Overflow ever? Please raise your hands. OK, Stack Overflow is a site where you, where, when you post questions, programming questions, and people from the community solve your questions. In this case, rubygamedev is kind of like a Stack Overflow, but for programmers who use Ruby for games. Which is which happens to be that there are a lot of people doing uh, video games with Ruby. I'm not really sure why, but that's pretty cool. Uh, so they spent three months working on some features. I think, uh, as far as I remember, they work on the voting feature. Um, there were some features regarding emails. Uh, of course, there were broken unit and integration tests they fixed, and they spent three times working on that. Um, the company provided us a place. Uh, at the office and gave gave uh, permission for both uh, well for all of us for Anna Nora and myself to spend time with the girls mentoring teaching and um, giving guidance on how to work on the project this is the cool part because it's not like uh, hey girls there's a project see you in three months and show me what you did no it's like you really need to work with them they are learning so they are it is very probable that they don't know how, they are not sure how to make things in the right way, so you have to teach them how. Teach them how. They spent three months, and then um, in, I think, September, October last year, uh, Sandra discovered this program, Outreachy. What is this? It's similar to Summer of Code, but this is an eight month internship, and, the, uh, and they as well pay you to work for, uh, for open source project. But in this case, uh, the projects we're talking about, uh, Mozilla Foundation, um, OpenStack, I think uh, Python, like really big projects. I mean, not like uh, small projects, but big companies. Uh, 
and the only condition to participate on on this program is uh, that the the people who want to apply they previously have to sub submit some code to the to the project they want to participate. Sandra decided that she wanted to work on OpenStack. Who has heard about OpenStack? No one. Yeah, I haven't seen talks about OpenStack here, which is pretty cool. Okay, um, OpenStack is uh, well uh, several projects that compose the OpenStack uh, software. So this this projects uh, allow you to manage your infrastructure your infrastructure but using code i mean you can using code uh, create a new instance of servers or vi virtual servers of course you can provide them with a uh, uh, operative system with some network uh, interfaces you can um, pretty much manage create and destroy and administrate this uh, all your your cloud infrastructure which is cool because uh, I mean, if if you detect in your code in your application that you are getting uh, an increase of your users, then you can with code uh, say to OpenStack, I don't know, if we are getting more than 100 uh, requests per second, create another server, and OpenStack helps you with the uh, load balancer and that stuff. And, and and I mean, it's pretty cool OpenStack. And she decided to work on that project. Um, and on October, uh, she told us, hey, I got my first uh, pull request approved to OpenStack. Uh, she, uh, she fixed some uh, tests that were broken on the uh, Redis cluster unit testing. Uh, this project is mostly written on Python, and she had never used Python before. So she contacted a lot of contributors from OpenStack from, from Mexico and other countries, and they were happy to help. Uh, and I mean, at this point, this girl has done something that I have never done. I have never get approved something to OpenStack or any of the other major uh, project. So I'm very happy for for being part of this, for for help him, help her. And another uh, cool part of the of this story, uh, again in October 2015, we had the first uh, social hackathon in Colima called Hack Colima, uh, um, and they won. And I mean, that was awesome. I mean, these girls were, uh, they haven't even graduated from university at that time. And they are doing open source, they're winning contests, they are uh, providing solutions to problems from their community. Uh, and I mean, this is pretty cool. Then they decided to apply it, uh, for an internship on the company. They were, of course, accepted. So they were uh, on a six month internship. And I think last week they were hired as full-time employees. Um, the last month they were working with a client, with a, with a, with a real uh, in a, on a project we had with a client. They were having again stand-ups, meetups, uh, communication with the client on the United States. Uh, in less than a year that they uh, started with the Summer of Code program. Uh, this is a picture of us I really like. Uh, this is from Programmer's Day, which is around September 13, if I remember well. Um, I mean, we have uh, created a very uh, a, a solid group of, of people who wants to program. In this case, uh, the, this is Nora, Sandra, um, Anna in the middle, uh, Karen at this point, and myself at that point. And I mean, we are very happy for, for what we have done. We know we can do a lot more, and we really want to make uh, this program, uh, you know, we want to really have at least two people participating of Summer of Code every year. But if it is not possible, we want to make some initiatives, and we have done some initiatives to, to start helping these uh, groups to start working on, on, on a professional career in programming. Uh, so, so far, this is what we learned. And, and I think this is the most important part of the talk for, 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 for you. Uh, remember that we have three questions. The first one, how to make young devs contribute to open source? And the answers are, well, mentoring. Uh, they have the talent, they have the, the, the knowledge maybe, they have the enthusiasm to participate, but they don't know how. I attended a talk yesterday that was uh, related to how open source 
uh, helped me to get my dream job. I don't know if you were there. But um, the person who gave the, who gave the talk mentioned something similar, like people want to help, people want to, to do open source, but they are afraid and they are not uh, confident about, about their, their own skills. So what's what you, as people who have uh, more time working on the industry, help them mentoring? And why? Being a mentor rocks. It's really cool. You, uh, for, for this program, I really improved my uh, programming skills because I, uh, the girls sometimes uh, ask things about Ruby and Rails, basic things, but I didn't remember those things, so I have to look for them and explain, uh, and explain the, the, what they wanted to know. So this really helped me as a person and as a programmer to improve my skills. Also, it's about trust. Uh, our company trusts that we, even though we were spending time with the girls, we could make also uh, a regular job and get it, uh, get it in time. Um, this was very exhausting because sometimes uh, in Mexico, you, uh, companies usually close at 6 p.m., but we have to make up the time that we spend with the girls. So sometimes we were working at 7 or 8, maybe get some uh, work uh, for home. And of course, we were spending more time, but it was pretty cool that the company trusted on us and we trust in the girls. We trust that they really appreciate uh, what we were doing for them and, and they were, uh, and actually it paid off. The second question, if you have a company, this is, uh, or, or you work for human resources uh, at, a, at a software company, the second question, how, how to find talent for your company? The answer is you don't really find talent, uh, or, or well, you, you don't really find, uh, it is easy to get uh, people, programmers who have 10 years working, and they are very good, but they, going, they are not going to be cheap. You have to pay them well. So I, I think it is easier to support your local communities, uh, spot people who is really uh, advanced and they, uh, they have the skills, so in this case, we found uh, these girls on the Women Who Call Colima chapter. But I mean, I have realized in the three years, of, uh, in the three days of this conference that there are several communities. So in case you have a company, or you work for a company who, is, uh, who needs talent, it's easy. If you need uh, people who programs in Python, go to PyLadies, go to Django Girls, and look for those girls. I mean, they might not come up uh, easily, but if you spend some time attending the communities and asking and talking to the organizers, which, is the, we, we, which people is the, the one you think is, is, is ready to, to work or, or is interested in working? Take these people from, from the community and help them to improve. And also we found this, uh, and it's related to the point I said, uh, foster talent on people. I mean, people who is, uh, People who are working on, on programming related fields are very smart. I mean, the career is kind of hard, but I mean, they are talented. So instead of acquiring talent, instead of buying uh, great programmers or, or hiring great programmers, hire, uh, hire good programmers who are beginning and make them great programmers. It, it, it's, I think it's easier than, than you think. And the third question, how to help underrepresented groups start a professional path and programming? You really need to invest time, money, and human resources. Again, it's not going to be uh, thanks to magic that, I don't know, in 10 years we have 40% of women in programming. No, I mean, it's not, going to, it's not going to happen that way. We really need to invest time with the people, teach them, invest money. I mean, they have... Even though they are enthusiastic, they have to get food, they have to uh, commute to a school, commute to your company. So they really need money to get these things done. And invest human resources. I mean, uh, spend time, make your senior engineers uh, spend time with, this, uh, with your junior and trainees. It, it really pays off. And the other one is create a good job environment. I mean, again, uh, underrepresented group, uh, are, might not be confident about their skills, so make an environment that really supports them, that really 
when they make a mistake, don't really be harsh with them. I mean, everybody makes mistakes. I have made like 15 mistakes in the th last 30 minutes. You might have not noticed. You might have. But like really encourage them to do the job. And if they do wrong, explain why it's wrong and teach them how to do it the right way. Um, for this, there are some initiatives. Uh, the one I mentioned, Rails Girls Summer of Code. I'm pretty much sure that there are similar initiatives for other languages or web frameworks. That's a web page. Uh, Outreachy, outreachy.org. This one is very cool, Technovation Challenge. I think Brazil also participates on, participates on this. Uh, this is a program for, 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 for women, I think, between 12 and 16. Uh, they have to create an, a, a mobile application that solves a problem uh, for, for their local community. Um, this, uh, this is a thing, uh, almost an uh, eight-month initiative. So the, uh, it, it works more or less the same. Uh, you have to find mentors, and you have to get a team that wants to apply, and you have to work with them and teach them how to do web applications, teach them uh, how to create features. I mean, all the things that senior developers do, you have to teach them how to do. Uh, this is the page, technovationchallenge.org. This one is also cool, your first pull request. Um, just to, to, to put everyone in context, a pull request is when you submit code to a project and you ask the owner of the project to include the code in, your, uh, in, in, in the code base. Uh, he, he might decide to accept or not. To give, uh, he gives you some, uh, it gives you some, some feedback about uh, parts of the code. And then when you get the pull, requ uh, pull request accepted, the code you created goes to the, the main code base. And this is the page, your first peer.github.io. Uh, uh, and this, the, uh, these pull requests on, on here are, maybe a senior can fix them easily, but they are not for seniors. And they, they have a special tag like, this is especially for beginners only. So the, the, there's a, a good way to start working on open source. And cost triage is uh, open source project submit uh, apply to this page. And you get an email, a daily email about a project you are interested in and all the issues they have and how to, uh, how to help them. Um, and I found this quote, I mean, it's pretty similar. I think you have heard this. Give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. Uh, we can do the same for uh, open source, right? Like give a man a primitive software and you will uh, teach him how to use a computer uh, teach a man open source, and and he will he will know how to create uh, computer programs for life for a lifetime. Uh, I found this was a quote Bob Marley, but I'm not really sure, so I put a citation needed in that part. Um, remember that I mentioned that we have uh, some for people who is not uh, a programmer. Um, this is my you ha the question you might have. I'm not a programmer. Can I still help to open source? And the answer is. Yes. Uh, we really need a lot of help in other areas rather than product. Um, the first one is use the product. Uh, I mean, we cannot make our open source project better if we, don't, uh, if we don't have people who use them. So use open source, use free software, uh, and give feedback to the, the creators of the software. Hey, I had a problem on, on this uh, platform. I, I found this book. I think you, your software is great. Maybe you, maybe you don't find any book, or you are happy with the, the product, but take the time to, to say thanks to the creators. I mean, open source really takes time, so just say thanks. Translations for people who are studying languages. Uh, this is also a very important um, part of open source, I mean. I have I don't speak Portuguese at all, so it's been the, these three days have been very fun because I think I have behaved like like a caveman to asking for food and asking for directions. So I mean it's it's really frustrating to not be able to communicate, and it, it is also I I I I'm 100 I agree 100 percent that if you don't know English, that shouldn't be a problem to work on software. I mean, at a point, it's really helpful to learn English, but it shouldn't forbid you to, to do programming. So take your favorite open source project and check if there is a 
translation in your language? If it is not, ask how you can submit uh, or help with translations. Also, uh, documentation. This is imp an important part. Maybe you found a book on, I don't know, LibreOffice, and you figured out that if you hit your keyboard three times, it works. So document that and submit that. Write blo blog posts uh, about the problems you have and how you solve them. Save time for other people who might have the same problem that you. Design. Uh, this is, there's a popular belief that people who create code are terrible and have uh, awful tastes on design. And it might be true, it maybe not. But if you're a designer, if you have uh, an interested, interest on design, you can help your favorite uh, open source project to have a better design. Also, the documentation, sometimes we are happy writing Markdown, but it's not very stylish, so you can help them to have a nice documentation. Why? Nice documentation attracts people. When you have a, a project or, or a product you want to use and the documentation is friendly, it is more probable that you use that, that product. So help us with design. We really need it. Social networks, there are some projects that really need help uh, managing networks or maybe sending imp uh, important messages to other users in maybe a different language, maybe in the same. So ask, uh, if you are more like marketing on that stuff, you can help with uh, social networks and managing. Uh, reproduce, reproduce reported books. This part is important because sometimes people go with uh, open source uh, creators and they say, hey, I have a problem. Your soft, what's the problem? Your, your software sucks. Okay, um, what happened? It doesn't work. Okay, why you say it doesn't work? Because it's terrible. Okay, uh, I think we're not getting somewhere if you just don't give me the error it's you are in counter. Uh, and maybe um, and there, there's another case that, for example, someone reports a book, uh, I don't know, my, my, your page is not working on Internet Explorer 7. Okay, I, I really want to help you, but I don't have Windows and I don't have Internet Explorer, so can you please reproduce the steps, t uh, take some screenshots, try to like really may help me to get closer to find the book. Sometimes you cannot reproduce books, so if the people who, who encounter the book gives you more information, it is as easier for us to fix the book. And testing, again, some, some, um, some projects have uh, some problems where, with new versions of uh, operative system or all those. Uh, or for example, you might not, uh, as an open source creator, you might not support officially a dist uh, Linux distribution, a, li a Linux distro, but maybe a user found out that it works on that. So just like test if everything works and report that, hey, this works also on Ubuntu 8. Okay, let's add that to the list of supported distributions. And this part is also important, evangelism. Um, talk about the, sof the open software, open source software and the libre, uh, libre free software you use. Talk to your friends, and just like, hey, I just find out this stuff, LibreOffice, which is cool, and it works with my Microsoft documents, and I haven't had any problems, so you should try. This, this uh, uh, kind of marketing, mouth to mouth, is very good for projects. And if you really don't have time to do the others, you can always make uh, economic um, financial donations to projects. I mean, programmers also sleep, also have a, a family, also ha uh, spend money on food, spend money on commute. They also want to have vacations, so money is, is, is a good way to, to, it's a very straightforward way to participate. Um, I, um, just to, to finish this talk, I'm going to give uh, this quote. So, flows goes beyond code and computers. It works thanks to the efforts of thousands of people who believe that through software and collaboration can make this world a better place for everybody. And I really like this quote because it's a quote I created two weeks ago for a conference. But I think it resumes uh, perfectly what I want to, to, to transmit to you. The fact that, I mean, I traveled 17 hours because I really believe that what I had to say was worth listening and that you can implement some of these programs in your, in your companies, or you can uh, adapt some of the learnings for, uh, for, from this talk to, to, your, 
everyday life. So, questions? Preguntas en español también son bienvenidas. Portugués también, entiendo un poco. No? Um, well, I have some stickers from RailsBridge and from MagmaLab, so I can give you some outside once the conference is done, in case you want. And thank you. <laughs>